So I got a little compaction to do all the way across here, you know, getting it about three inches about right now. So I got to compact it one time before I go and put another load in. Plus my hillside was a little soft yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and compact that so I don't have the tractor do something I don't want it to do. So uh, get this thing uh, another round, another layer across, get it graded again. Um, and then set myself a, a shot. I've got to go do, get the grade, grade rod and get that going. So, uh, you know, many steps to go before putting in the bricks. But the bricks go fast. I just did a set here. I did it kind of, you know, last uh, minute thought this morning. And uh, that goes really quick once you start rolling. It's all about the prep work like with all things. Okay, at the end of day four here, I'm going to go ahead and put a pause on it because I have some other property work to do. But I've gotten this, self, this thing all level. So after work, I can come in and throw in 20, 30 bricks a day or whatever and, and get myself lined up and get it all built out and ready to go. Uh, I think, you know, obviously this is one of the hardest parts here is to get, do the foundation and uh that looks pr to be pretty good uh you know a little bit high a little bit low but that's what you're going to get until you get into the micro when you're sitting there on the ground and you're making the adjustments as need be so the wall to the north here is in a good pause state uh, i'm going to bring that all the way around and be complete to that that same height there that's going to cross the culvert and uh, get it to get the same height and then get all my uh, posts ready to go so yeah, end of day four here and uh, keep going. Okay, I'm gonna start on day five here. I've already got my uh, foundation in. All I need to get done and get going with here is the bricks ready to go. Just start putting them down. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna work towards this turn, get that math correct, make sure it lands correctly. It will be one of these moments where I need it to be right uh, because as I make that turn, correspondingly the fence post will land up here on the top and I wanna make sure that that lands correctly and turns as I have designed. So with that, let's get going.
Okay, so at 16 feet and 10 inches, I've, that is the back of my brick. Because it's going to go up and lose 8 inches on the way back, plus half of a brick inside of the post, which I'm not explaining fully, but bottom line is the post that's in the middle of our pavers. So then that's half of a brick, that's 6 inches. So I need to have 14 inches to come back. 14 inches comes back off of 18. Okay, 10 and 10, uh, 16 and 10 inches. 18 feet minus a foot and two inches is 16 and 10 inches. I think I've explained it now. So this is the turn right here. That's the back of it. So the next brick needs to come across here and out. Okay, so it comes out at an angle possibly. Got to look at it and see how it flows in. So one of the things I want to make sure is that this corner really has some oomph to it. It doesn't just get pushed out. So I'm going to go ahead and take this brick here and go the opposite direction of this and line up. So it will give it a nice firm backing here. Now, when I come out square, I'm going to have to come out square this way, one brick or so, and then start making my turn. So, I'm going to go ahead and put that one brick in past this point, so that it has something firm to come across on. Okay, that turn was a bit more than I wanted to be as far as time took, but yet it's important to get it right. So now we got the turn laid out, we got the right flow, we got the right cadence where the bricks don't line up over the top of each other, they shingle each other. This is perfectly level right here on the eight foot. So I'm excited about what tomorrow brings. Tomorrow we'll continue to do this run, this course all the way down and start getting some efficiencies. Up to this point, it's been a little bit inefficient. So uh, let's uh, get that thing rolling the right way. So tomorrow I'll be back at it and uh, here we go. Okay, back out here in what we'll call day six, even though I think yesterday I was only out here for a couple hours for day five. Uh, but uh, so today's a really, really important day. We're making the turn come around here to fill in that, you know, back side of the uh, willow trees. But the first step is to lay in this base course here, the foundation course, make sure that I feel good about it. I think I got a good cadence. I've come up to the far edge of the of my foundation here. Didn't want to do that, but I think I'm fine. I'm gonna stay with it. But then before I know it, I'll be cutting across the breadth of the foundation, landing right in the middle and then finding myself there. So I'm trying to make it a quasi circle um, it's not gonna be perfect just given the fact that this area is laid out a little bit longer than it is width wise um, so we're just gonna have to play with that but yeah those are the steps today I'm hopeful that I can get in at least the base course the next course up and if I'm so squirrely you might be able to get to the next course but if, remember we still have to put the drain tile behind we still have to uh, put in geotech after the second uh, after the two courses put the geotech in as well we'll talk about a little bit about how we can't have those overlapping at any level they got to be in, in, independent so there'll be a little bit of gap between those as the turn comes around so you know I'm hopeful but a lot going on today so let's get going
Here we are on day seven, and uh, I've already filled in this hole all last night. Filled in the back side. I shared out some of that just a moment ago. So we're ready to go for some serious coursework and getting some bricks going. I say this to you, but there's always a pause. One of the things you obviously have to make sure you're taking care of is whatever the water demands that are on the back side of the wall, you want to try to eliminate them as much as possible. We do most of that through the drain tile, you know, the drain rock and getting that out. But the volume of water that will probably be sitting up here on this willow section will be quite a bit. And the reason for that is that the snow plow comes by and dumps off snow there. I dump off snow off this uh, long driveway. So there's a lot of snow that lands here and then it'll melt down and, and it'll create even more water behind it, which of course can lead to frost heave and what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a catch, catch basin up there to make sure that I collect as much water as possible, slope everything to that catch basin. I'm going to run a, a four inch pipe out here to go right into the creek. A nice little spot here that will fit perfectly with that without it, you know, you know, looking outside of bounds. It's going to be obviously buried. So I'm going to work on that right now. i got to get that in first. And then I'm uh, going to go ahead and, and set a course, get that course in, and then work on the drain tile because, again, that's the next step after that. And then we'll backfill, put on some geotech, and hopefully a third course today. So we do have rain in the forecast. So uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock, this game's over. But, uh, yeah, got to get to work. So one thing I didn't mention earlier with this pipe is I'm also going to run a T out to catch the French drain that I'm going to be putting in underneath the pavers. That'll come to kind of light later on in, a, in the series here. But ultimately, I need that pipe to run out all the way across to the driveway, you know, and it'll T out here. I mean, it may not be perfect uh, plumbing 101. But I'm not expecting a billion gallons to go through this. You know, at best case, you're, you know, you're going to have a basic flow. It's all going to be water. Uh, so there's no solids or anything to worry about. But ultimately, I'm just going to put a simple T in. I'm not going to worry about a Y and all that other stuff. It'll probably hit, bubble back the other way a little bit and then go out. So, um, yeah, good to go.
am on day eight. What we're going to do today is finish off this section of the wall, put it in the geo grid, and making sure this rock is exactly level so the geo grid does its job at a plane that's even with everything across. So I've got you know quite a bit of uh, I mean I only got a little bit of bricks here to do, but once I get the geo grid in. There's going to be quite a bit of rock movement, so it'll be a lot of jumping rock in. So it's kind of a half day. I'm doing this in the afternoon, and uh, just get a couple bricks in, get that rock in, and throw it up. Set myself up for tomorrow when I'm going to start doing some runs, or should I say courses, and it should be starting to move a lot faster now that we're out of the phase of the the, the base bricks, put in the drain tile, all that functional stuff that's behind us now. So we should be able to move on to is getting bricks in. So good. This is the time when it's kind of rewarding. It moves a lot faster. Over my shoulder is a very good look at how the geogrid sits down on it. Again, I've come off of the brick that's right above the base brick. So about six inches up, put the geogrid in. It's going back three to four feet depending on the turn and where we're at. You never overlap this. So as the turn comes along, there's a little bit of separation between the geogrid as it's coming back into its smaller radius into the back of the fill. So, what you'll see here all behind me is uh, it's ready to go, it's leveled out, and we're going to go ahead and throw some A grade on top of it and make sure it's all locked down and ready to go. Set us up for tomorrow morning. That's the last thing I'm going to go ahead and do tonight. Right, you're going to continue to backfill, compact, and put another course up, and then backfill and compact. The only difference today will be that this. Uh, uh, fabric behind me, the four, in, four ounce fabric, is going to have to be brought forward, put a little dirt behind it, brought back, put some more rock in front of it, so it's going to go back and forth, back and forth as the as we're going up higher. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and start uh, finish off with the raking here, do a little compaction, and then uh, again just start the rinse and repeat process. Okay, that was uh, interesting backfill. It takes quite a bit of time and compaction, especially that first layer where it kind of dips into a, a little void there. So now that's all filled up and looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and place uh, several pallets on the back side there of, uh, of the bricks and uh, start working this course. Uh, it should go pretty decent, pretty quick. And then uh, back to the backfill and compaction and what have you. So, here we go.
Well, it's taken a long time to get to this point where I can compact it and work it. Man, this really went into the V and quite a bit of effort has to go into making it all leveled out. Here it is on day nine and I'm going to go ahead and work on this corner and getting in the geogrid for the next course. Um, I do have a decision in this corner. I don't know if you can pick up on it in the rock pile behind me, but uh, this area is again right up against the right of way for the county. So I'm basically right here. You can see in the frame, I believe, the internet sign there. So it, it, we're cutting off right here and I don't want to exceed this space. So I'm going to build it up when it's all said and done, probably about right here. Um, go level towards the street. And then this section here is just unfortunately going to be something of a managed area. It is rural property and you have to realize that up against the road, you're not going to probably control it. It's just a lot of labor and, you know, it's uh, very tedious because again, it's a lot of slope and what have you. So, um, I'm going to probably come back here, fill in a little bit more dirt, get the rock up to plane here so that I can get that those bricks to go backwards. I'll probably go ahead with a, a 18 inches or so, maybe two feet deep of brick, and then so I can build up that corner and make the turn. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, build that dirt up accordingly to come up and swing up and match in with the area where the willow is going to sit. So, uh, pretty simple day. Not not going to get a lot done. Um, I'm up against uh, some material, uh, you know, uh, shortages, which was somewhat planned, to be honest with you. So I have the rock here behind me that I'll use. I have some dirt in the back that I'll go ahead and use. I'll put to work here. But to be fair, I needed a little bit of a pause so that I can get the right materials in at the right time. So I'll get the dirt in next. I'll get another load and I'll just dump it right here on the top, spread it around. Uh, give me an opportunity to make sure that uh, we have everything looking, you know, ready to go. And then I'll get another rock drop. So we've got on paper, I have four more courses to go. Um, so we're a foot and a half here and then we got the standalone brick that you'll be able to see on both sides So that'll be the four feet with the cap on it um, So I've got I've got some uh, thinking through in these next phases. We'll see what it plays out here um, I believe I might end up only doing three more courses and uh, And then put a cap on it and be three and a half feet tall um, so mm, I got to look at it. it seems it seems to be kind of a think it through I'm right now if I was to look eyeball the road I probably have four feet not a problem but I want to make sure I don't exceed the road height because then that 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 wouldn't work so with that hey gonna get to it Okay, I've made the turn. Now, I am trying to do the crisscross stack all the way up. I did have the last two rounds, uh, two courses, um, they went the same way, and unfortunately, just because of the way it was working. But now I'm back to the repeat this way, so I'm pulling across uh, accordingly so that it has that kind of strength that comes with it. Of course, I have the geogrid that's gonna pull it this way, and then eventually there's gonna be this pull this this direction so it'll be a solid solid corner you don't make the corner where it just butts in and then that's a gap in the corner you've got to overlay and I've done such
Okay, I was going to go ahead and uh, try to finish up some more of the rock and finish that off completely, but I decided to let that go until uh, I get the back of this done all the way around the turn. It looks like I'm at kind of a stopping point, so I'm going to go ahead and do such and pick it back up uh, maybe early uh, afternoon this week, um, but probably next weekend and hopefully get two more courses in next weekend, if not more. I do have the the rounds to cut and put into place so that might take some time off the off the total day so I'll probably be fighting that a little bit but uh, yeah we got about two more courses the back fill behind we're not going to do any more geo grid after this row um, because basically what you're going to have is three bricks left yeah I just think we're there I think we've got there two levels of geo grid it's in good shape um, you know hold it all together in the base and yeah it's not going anywhere this thing's a, a brick house 